Hello, math humans. We are going to do the last section in Chapter 4 today, Logarithmic Differentiation. Our objectives are that we're going to do logarithm. sorry, we're going to use our logarithmic skills to assist in taking derivatives of seemingly complex equation. This is the key word. So if we use our log skills, then it can rewrite some really crazy equations. All right, let's go back and do some work with logarithms before we get started. So this is just a reminder. Brain and mouth aren't working at the same speed, sorry. Equals two to the x. Alrighty. So if you'll notice in this equation, I have an exponential situation going on. The problem is the bases are not the same. So because the bases aren't the same, I can't solve the little baby equation at the top. But what I can do is take the log of both sides, natural log of 2 to the x. Remember in calculus, most of the time we like to use natural log. I like it because it's easier to write, it's less letters. Properties of exponents say that the exponent goes out front, sorry, properties of logarithms. So this is going to be x plus 1 times the natural log of 3. <clears throat> he goes out front, so this is going to be x natural log of 2. The goal is going to be to solve for x. So I'm going to distribute on this side. So I'm going to get x natural log 3 plus the natural log of 3 is x natural log 2. I'm going to subtract this guy, move this guy. So x natural log 3 minus x natural log 2 is the natural negative natural log of 3. I'm going to factor out an x, and I'm going to get the natural log of 3 minus the natural log of 2. Here's this guy. Divide, and I'm going to get x is equal to a negative natural log of 3 divided by the natural log of 3 minus the natural log of 2. How's that for a crash course in remembering how to do logarithms? So now what we're going to do, sorry, before I say that, critical thing to remember is that if I have craziness going on and I can't solve the baby equation at the top, basically I'm going to take the log of both sides and I'm going to use my properties of logarithms to manage a complex function. And we will do some examples as we go, so not to worry. Oops, my paper slid. All right, let's do an, our, our first example. So I'm going to do example number one, and I'm going to have y is equal to x raised to the tangent of x, and I want to find the derivative. And I'm going to tell you that that would be a little bit entertaining. But what I'm going to do is, just like I did before, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So since I'm taking the natural log, actually I won't skip steps, I'll do it in a minute. Since I took the natural log, this is the exponent he's going to go out front. So now I'm going to take the natural log of y, and I'm going to write the tangent of x, natural log of x. So now I'm going to start my derivative. So if you'll notice, I'm taking the derivative of a y thing, and remember when I do that, it generates a dy dx because it's implicit differentiation. So the derivative of the natural log of y is 1 over y, and then I'm going to get dy dx, which is my derivative. That's what we're going to be solving for. Now this is the product rule. So it's the first thing times the derivative of the second, which is 1 over x, plus the second thing times the derivative of the first, which is secant squared x. <clears throat> the goal is to solve for dy dx. So I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit. I think I can squeeze it in over here. Sorry, I'll come back up here. So I'm going to say 1 over y dy dx is equal to, I'm going to move this out front, and here's my tangent of x, and then I'm going to write natural log of x times secant squared x. Can you see all that? I think you can. Remember, we're trying to solve for dy dx, so I'm going to get rid of the y. The opposite of division is multiplication, so I'm going to multiply both sides by y. So here's my 1 over x, tangent of x, plus the natural log of x, secant squared x, and I'm going to multiply this side 
by y. Well, guess what? We already know what y is, so I'm going to write that my dy dx is going to equal 1 over x tangent of x plus the natural log of x secant squared x times y, which is x tangent of x. And that, my dears, was pretty cool. So here's what I'm going to tell you to look for. If it looks like the thing is complicated, we want to be able to use our properties of logarithms to help us do some complicated math. All right, before we do our next, next example, I want to remember some properties of logarithms. So <clears throat> if I am given 3 natural log x minus the natural log of 3x plus the natural log of 12x squared, this is called expanded form, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to work our way back and we're going to condense this particular expression. So remember that if it was out front, that means it's an exponent. So this is the natural log of x cubed. And then this one I'm just going to leave alone for the time being. And I'm going to leave this one alone. The only thing I really managed right now was taking this 3, the number in front, and putting it in the exponent position. Now if you'll remember from logarithms, I can write this in one statement. So I'm going to have one natural log, and then I'm going to put a divided line. Anything that's positive goes multiplied together in the numerator. Anything that's negative goes in the denominator. So I'm going to have x to the third. I'm going to have a 3x. And then in the numerator, I'm going to have a 12x squared. So now I can simplify what I have. 3 goes into 12 four times. x goes into x squared and leaves an x. So this is going to simplify to be the natural log of 4x to the fourth, because x to the third times x to the one, sorry, is going to be 4x to the fourth. This is called the condensed form. So now we're going to go the opposite direction, okay? Because this is what we're going to use a lot. So now if I have the natural log of 5x to the third over y squared, now I want to expand it. So different problem, sorry, in case I didn't make that clear. So I'm going to write this as the natural log of 5 plus, this is x cubed, so the exponent goes out front, natural log of x, and then because he's in the denominator and he has an exponent, the exponent goes out front, here's the natural log, and here's the y. So imagine if you were trying to take the derivative of this. If I expanded it, now it's really easy to take the derivative. And so we use the expanded form to make some complicated logarithm things look a little bit more polite. All right, so let's do our next example. This one's kind of entertaining. Sorry, I think it's kind of fun. We're going to be given y is equal to x times x squared plus 1 over x plus 1 to the 2 thirds. And I want to find the derivative. So at this point you're thinking, oh no, I got a product rule, I got a chain rule, I got the quotient rule, oh no. The moral of the story is, we're going to take the natural log of both sides and we're going to make it look a whole lot easier. So I'm going to write the natural log of y, and I'm going to write the natural log of this mess, x and x squared plus 1 over my x plus 1 to the 2 thirds. Okay? Now I'm going to expand the right hand side. So this is the natural log of x plus the exponent is 1 half, so I'm going to write it out front. And this, oops, I forgot the natural log of x squared plus 1. And then I have minus, because he's in the denominator, the exponent goes out front. Here's the natural log of x plus 1. That looks a whole lot easier to take the derivative of. It's still going to be a little messy, but this is so much easier than this. So now when I take my derivative, 
because I'm taking the derivative of a y, the derivative of natural log of y is 1 over y, and then I generate a dy dx is equal to. The derivative of this guy is 1 over x. Here's the 1 half. The derivative of that guy is going to be x squared plus 1 times the derivative of the inside, 2x. I'll clean it up in a little bit. <clears throat> okay, and then I have, here's the two-thirds. The derivative of the inside goes down on the bottom times the chain rule, the derivative is 1. Okay, so now let's clean it up a little bit. So I'm still going to write 1 over y dy dx. Here's the 1 over x. These twos cancel, so it's going to be plus x over x squared plus 1. In this one, nothing cancels, so I'm just going to write 2 over 3 times x plus 1. Remember the goal is to solve for dy dx, so now I'm going to multiply both sides by y. So I'm going to mark this off, and I'm going to multiply by y. <clears throat> but remember, here's y. So now I'm going to write my dy dx. I'm just going to write this first part, 1 over x plus x over x squared plus 1 minus 2 over 3 times x plus 1. And now I'm going to write my y, which is x, and then here's my x squared plus 1 over x plus 1 to the 2 thirds. And that's actually, oops, you can't see it, my bad, I'm sorry. It's actually really slick. This is gross. But if I needed to evaluate my derivative, I could just substitute in values for x, so it actually works out to be fairly cool. But here's what you need to recognize. When you look at this and you go, oh no, I'm in trouble. If you think about that, then you should immediately also think about, I'll just take the log of both sides, and that's going to make my math life a whole lot easier. All right, let's move on. I think I have one or two more examples, technically two. All right. So in the next one, example number three, we're going to have y is equal to x raised to the 1 over the natural log of x. Well, that's gross, and I want to know what is the derivative. So again, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So I'm going to write the natural log of y. This is my exponent, so he goes out front, natural log of x times the natural log of x. All right? Well, notice right here that the natural log and the natural log cancel, so I get that this is 1. <clears throat> so now when I take the derivative, holy cow, that's easy, so the derivative of this is 1 over y, dy dx is equal to 0. If I multiply both sides by y, 0 times y is 0, so I get dy over dx is equal to 0. So that was kind of cool. But when you look at it, it might not have seemed like that would work out quite so easily. All right. Woo! Instant problem. Last example. It says the spread of flu in a certain school is modeled by the equation p of t is equal to 100 divided by 1 plus e 3 minus t where P of T is the total number of students infected T days after the flu was first noticed. This is a great calculus problem, by the way. The first thing we want to do is estimate the initial number of students infected by the diseases, and then we want to know how fast our disease is spreading after three days. How fast? Cool words for calculus. And then C says when will the flu spread at its maximum rate? All right. Sorry, had to have a water break. <clears throat> All right, so let's tackle A. It says, an, estimate the initial number of students affected with the flu. Initial means that <clears throat> time is equal to zero, so I'm going to evaluate P of zero, which means it's 100 over 1 plus E raised to the 3 minus zero, so this is going to be 100 over 1 plus e to the third. And when I push buttons on my calculator, I get that this is 4.743 humans 
Well, that's gross. So we are going to round this to be five humans because we don't want 0.743 of a human. That's disgusting. So I'm going to say P of zero is approximately equal to five humans. Remember, we don't want to have bits and pieces of humans or bugs or bacteria or whatever. All right, so A was actually really easy. So for B, B says how fast. The first thing you should think is rate, which also means you're going to think derivative. <clears throat> so now I'm going to take the derivative of this cool thing. So I'm going to say for B that P of T is equal to, I'm going to write it right here just so it's a little bit easier to see, to the 3 minus T. I'm not going to take the log of both sides. I'm, I chose to do this problem because it turns out to be really cool. So now I'm going to do the, the quotient rule. Sorry. So when I take my derivative, P prime of T is going to equal low, this is E to the 3 minus T, times the derivative of the high, which is 0, minus high times the derivative of the low. But remember, the derivative of e to the x is just going to be e to the 3 minus t times the derivative, which is a negative 1, okay, all over my 1 plus e to the 3 minus t and then quantity squared. This guy goes to 0. This guy's going to become positive, so p prime of t is going to equal 100 e to the 3 minus t, and then over 1 plus e to the 3 minus t quantity squared. So that is <coughs> my derivative. But notice that it says how fast is it spreading after 3 days. So that means I want to evaluate the derivative at 3. So this is going to be 100 e to the 3 minus 3 over 1 plus e to the 3 minus 3 quantity squared. Well, 3 minus 3 is going to be e to the 0. And anything to the 0 is 1, so this is going to be 1. This, by the same thing, is also going to be 1. So this is going to be 100 divided by 1 plus 1 is 2 squared, which is 4. So it's going to be 25. So I'm going to say that how fast is the, is the flu spreading after 3 days? So I'm going to say that the flu is spreading to 25 students by, after 3 days. Sometimes in calculus, it's just nice to write the words because it seems a little bit easier. All right, so that was B. The C part says, when will the flu spread at its maximum rate? So let me stick this here so you can see it. When will the flu spread at its maximum rate? Well, we already did this. This was going to be our dp over dt. And it says, when will it hit its maximum? So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to graph the derivative, and I'm going to look at its peak. So I'm going to bring in my handy-dandy calculator. And let me write down, we're doing part C, that my derivative dp over dt was 100 e to the 3 minus t over 1 plus e to the 3 minus t quantity squared. So we are going to go to our handy dandy y equals, I'm going to clear what's there, and I'm going to do 100 second e raised to the 3 minus t, and then just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go back, second insert, and put this in parentheses just because it makes me nervous. And then I'm going to divide by parentheses 1 plus second e raised to the 3 minus t. And I'm going to square that guy. And I'm going to do a zoom. Let's see if I can do a zoom 6. No. So I'm going to stop it. I'm going to do a zoom 0. 
So as we wait for my handy dandy grapher to do its thing, so it's graphing the derivative, here it goes. Oh, there it is. That's pretty cool looking. Okay, so it says when will the derivative or when will the rate be at its maximum point? Well, there's the maximum point. So I can find that point, second calculate maximum, and I could do, I'm just going to get a little bit closer, left, go past the top, enter, enter, and it tells me that it occurs at three days. So notice that we had actually already found that. So my maximum rate occurred, that's a U, <laughs> sorry, I can't write, at three days, man, I can't write, and we infected 25 humans. So that was actually our maximum rate. And then if we solve this graphically, then we would show that sharp peak my graph looks terrible, and I would put a 3 here, and then I would put a 25 here, and then we call it good. So that was kind of a fun application of using logarithms. So moral of the story for today is when you see something that's really gross and complicated, think take the natural log of both sides. All right, my dears, that's it for today. I will see you soon.